we are located in Genome Text Laboratory. My name is Miron Tokarski and I'm a Chief Scientific Officer in Genome Tech. In today's video, we are going to show you the whole analytical process of genetic analysis with Genome Tech kits that are based on isothermal nucleate acid amplification technology called LAM. The tests are designed by our team and manufactured in Poland. The process of saliva collection can be performed by using any medically approved saliva collection device. For the purpose of this video, saliva was procured using a simple funnel mouthpiece connected with a collection tube, where trapped in a tube, saliva is secured by a screw cap. Please be mindful, the direct RT lamp test requires a native saliva sample without any additional stabilizing buffer. When swab sampling is preferred, again be mindful, a dry swab is to be obtained. However, due to invasiveness and the burden of swab collection, I recommend saliva sampling. The saliva can be used fresh or stored up to a week in a fridge, alternatively up to three weeks in a freezer. Collected around 500 microliters of saliva samples are being then processed in a separate laminar flow chamber, where 100 microliters of saliva is being transferred to a fresh Eppendorf tube, where it gets mixed with 200 microliters of Lysis buffer, a Lys buffer reagent supplied with the direct RT lamp kit. At this stage, please ensure that the Lisp buffer slurry is well mixed, for example by touch vortexing the bottle for at least 5 seconds. Eppendorf tubes containing such a prepared mixture are then placed into a thermoblock set at 95 degrees Celsius for five minutes incubation with gentle stirring. Samples must be cooled briefly on ice, followed by a touch spin to collect the evaporate from the cap and walls, and also to create the total RNA-enriched supernatant. The supernatant from such a prepared sample is being next used as a standard RNA isolate for the application reaction setup, thus adding it directly to the reaction mixtures. Saliva sample preparation for the GenomeTech SARS-CoV-2 EvoGreen RT Lamp CE IVD direct test is so much faster compared to a standard laboratory RNA isolation and purification protocol. After proper preparation of the laboratory workplace, we can transfer kit packaging from their place of storage, for example, the freezer and fridge for Lisp Buffett reagent. Thawing can be carried out at an ambient temperature or in a refrigerator. It is important, however, that the individual kit reagents are not exposed to excessive sunlight. While the reagents are thawing, we can program the real-time thermal cycler. Our tests utilize the most sensitive and specific detection technique, fluorescent signal detection. Additionally, usage of the latest generation of enzymes for pathogenic RNA detection allows the execution of two distinct molecular processes. This is the reverse transcription and the nucleic acid amplification, simultaneously, which further shortens the time needed for analysis. The analysis process includes the obligatory state of genetic material amplification carried out at a constant temperature in the range of 60 to 70 degrees Celsius, specific for each diagnostic kit. This stage takes 40 minutes, meaning 40 cycles of 60 seconds with fluorescent readout after each cycle, with an additional melting analysis step to be performed if required. Here you can see an example of the assay protocol. Continuing, we proceed with designing the assay microwell plate layout for the thermocycler, inputting location of assay controls, analytes, naming the diagnostic targets, and also setting up an appropriate fluorescent channels readout. These channels are indicated in the test manual. For this test, the readout takes place in the green channel, otherwise known as Cyber or FAM.
Once the thermocycler is programmed and the samples are prepped, we can proceed with the amplification reaction setup. For this purpose, we mix the appropriate volume of the amplification mix with the right primers. In this case, it will be a master mix detecting two SARS-CoV-2 genes, labeled as SARS-2, and a second master mix named inhibition control, detecting a conserved human gene labeled as IC. Our reagents are stable in ambient temperature. However, we recommend that you cool down the PCR multiwell plate when working with a larger number of samples to prevent degradation of the genetic material. After prepping the master mixes, apply them onto the appropriate wells of the reaction plate. In the next step, add to the predefined well samples the positive control, as well as water to produce non-template controls, NTC for IC and SARS-CoV-2.
After adding all the samples and controls, seal the plate and spin it down to remove any liquid from the walls of the plate microwells. In the next step, we place the plate in the thermocycler and run the protocol. For comparison, I would like to show you how much longer the SARS-CoV-2 analysis takes using the RT-PCR method. After completing the process, we can proceed with the results analysis. In the case of the lamp technique, the process is much simpler due to the enormous efficiency of amplification and thus very clear differences in the level of fluorescence between negative and positive samples.